I brought up the thought. We were talking about this with uh, Big Mike, who runs this place, Kavino and Rich. Who? Astronauts were put. Was the bear, to, the love doctor, Mike. Yeah. Astronauts were supposed to be launched into outer space yesterday. Now, for most of our parents' and grandparents' lives, the idea of space travel, astronauts, NASA, the space race against Russia, that was like the biggest narrative going on. And now we weren't even aware. Most of us weren't aware that we were launching astronauts into outer space and that it was canceled it was canceled yeah no one gave a diddly squat about it man now it's like uh, you know a couple billionaires uh you know start building their own little spaceships and no one cares about space travel can I the way this, we once did can i tell this into sports real quick rich more people have walked on the moon 12 than men who have scored against Mariano Rivera in the oh, postseason. Stop it. 11. Stop it. Oh, Only 11 wow. people. Is this one of those wow. Yankee memes I scroll past yes, really quick? Yes. But hold on. I bring that up to brag about the great Mariano Rivera, who was at the Knicks game, which is rare, uh, by I the saw way. That. It's so rare you see a legend like Mariano with all the young New York Yankees that play today. That was kind of cool. Like, who wins there? Is it cooler for the young guys to be with Mo Rivera or Mo Rivera to be with the young guys? I, they're the stars now. He's old guy now. Get out. He's a first it's ballot a Hall of Famer, now, dude. He just, he's the man. He's a legend. Reel him out with the rest of the old guys. You know, I was thinking next Friday for the broadcast in Eugene, Oregon, you yeah. should wear uh, Walt Frazier's suit from last night. I will. I will. <laughs> Did you see that? So um, anyway, I bring this up because only 12 men have even been on the moon, and we don't know who they are. We don't care who they are. <laughs> no, but it's amazing. You're I right. can name two of them. Yeah. But that's the thing, Spot. That's it. We should be we able st- to name all 12. We stopped, <laughs> we stopped caring after, after the first that. two. After the first two, who cares? You, you, can name every, you can name all 50-something Super Bowl winners probably in order. You can name MVPs and who's won every NBA you title. Can't, you can't there's even 12 name, people on the moon. You can't even name all the presidents, and there's only been, what, 46 of those? Dude, it's embarrassing. Shows where our seven? priorities are, really? for sure. But the question Four, then <laughs> poses as, well, let's think of other things that went from things we cared about to we don't care about at all. It's the opposite of the NFL draft, yeah. as we discussed last week. The NFL draft went from nothing to something, and going to outer space went from everything to, like, who gives a crap? So... Is there any other examples? Like, I have little stupid ones written down. Like, yo, we used to love these things, and now we don't care at all. I don't want to take these out of order, but I'll tie it back to sports. How about that? Remember in the 80s, Rich, we would love Battles of the Network Stars? <laughs> yo, I used to get so fired up about that. I'm like, hold on. Alan Thicke is racing against who? <laughs> Gary Coleman? Let's go! I, it's something you cared about. Uh-huh. I cared about that so much like oh wait they're playing t- who's in tug of war carl winslow versus who bruce jenner bruce <laughs> jenner versus carl winslow can't wait let's go battle of the network stars I mean, and dude we don't yeah. there's no sign of that at all if we're hanging out in the 80s and you're talking about sports i would argue baseball carts yeah well you know, they're well, back again, again things yeah, go in, in a different way in a not different the way. Same yeah. way not the same way things go in cycles for sure yeah, also not- on the documentary it showed oj simpson on some of those yeah. Oh, yeah. the uh, battle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, and he took it real serious. Well, you saw him running in that Hertz commercial. He's pretty. Uh, I know. He still had it. Uh, I have a whole list of them, but I don't want to steal yours. So I let's, that's why let's, I led uh, with that one. Let's go to the phones, and we'll start with Art in Florida. Art, based on the fact that we don't know about astronauts anymore, or care, about or them. care, just shows that there's things in life and sports that we used to care about, but for some reason we're like, yeah, no one cares anymore. What you got? Uh, you know, in the 90s, you had the baseball strike and the hockey strike. So NASCAR went from nothing to a bunch. You had rappers wearing NASCAR jackets. They were styling. George, uh, Jeff Gordon, uh, Dale Earnhardt Sr. before he died. It was such a big deal. And now it's back to Bubba and Earl, and nobody cares anymore. Rappers don't <laughs> wear anymore. It went from a flash in the pan to back to Bubba and Earl. Wow. So, yeah, again, it goes, and maybe it'll come back again, but right now, that's how it is. Matt in Illinois, Camino and Rich, what did people used to care about, but, eh, who cares now? Gentlemen, thanks for getting me in. Before I get to my two, that Battle of the Network Stars thing, we're going real quick about two that I was used to watch and care about they don't do anymore. One, American Gladiators. Yeah, I used to love it. And two, when they did that NFL skills competition, when you always had the strongest man and the fastest man, like Willie Galton and Daryl Green. I miss those days. Yeah, that was fun stuff. But the two that I was calling about 
Number one, MTV, when they actually used to show music videos, oh, yeah. and when everybody stopped, when Michael Jackson's Thriller video was coming out, when oh. watch music videos, they don't do that you anymore. You know, based on music. Dude, that was a great call. Hold on. Before we talk about the videos, yeah. back in the day, even before our time, if you were the fastest man in the world or the heavyweight champion of the world, that meant everything. If he was, hey, there he is, the champ. If you were the heavyweight champion of the world, you were the, come on, you had the strut. I mean, you were the guy. And if you were the fastest man in the world, you were the guy. We don't we don't put those things on that same pedestal it, at it all. It does still have some respect. It but does, but not, I could, not the you way You could argue that Olympians were in much yes. more high regard For sure. back in the 80s. That's like true. You know, they were uh, stars. They were in advertisements. They were on the cover of cereal boxes. Like, I'll be honest, name, name, a, name an Olympian besides Simone Biles and Michael Phelps. Ah. Uh, like, you know, if I saw them on the Wheaties box, Igor I'd be like, who's that? Khrushchev. <laughs> Silver, exactly. silver medal in pole vaulting, right? Uh, <laughs> well, back know? in the day, Ben Johnson, remember he got popped for steroids? Dude, what was that campaign that stunk? Like oh, Dave versus Dan, Dave, Dave, and Dave and Dan? By the way, yeah. it's, it's oh, funny. Yeah. That's that's why it's difficult to explain to younger people what a big star Bruce Jenner was. It's yeah. like, yeah, no, no, no. You don't understand. He was the greatest athlete in our minds you know, a, growing up. I have a quick baseball one you guys will remember when we were kids. Huge deal when Jose Conseco... Uh, did the forty forty club? And now it's like and whatever. There was a few players afterwards that yeah. did it. Not a big deal. Yeah, but it was front page news when Jose that, Canseco did it. That is a great example. Now, you know these are sort of things that you would argue, quote, lost their luster. Right? What what has lost its luster that yeah, we, we, we don't just care don't care? A la astronauts, we're supposed to go into space yesterday, and they they postponed it. I, I wrote down a few things. Astronauts, the idea of the network TV schedule, the idea of the TV guide, like yo, remember you had a scro- see, you had a scrolling TV guide on your cable. Network. Must remember see that? TV. That was fancy. NBC on Thursdays, TGIF on ABC on Fridays with Urkel and Full House. Like it was appointment Did watching. I do that? And now you think like anything you watch is streaming it's or on right. demand. We recently explained the TV guide to our middle kid, and he still did not understand. He kept saying, "Wait, so it." got mailed to your house and that's the only way you knew what was on TV? Yeah, yes. and Michael Landon was on the cover. <laughs> Highway to yeah. Heaven. And we were trying to explain to him, you were a big deal if you made the cover of the TV guy. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. Daniel, oh. that makes me think of uh, something that went from something to nothing. The newspaper. Yeah, the TV guide part was in the newspaper. Yeah. Like or, the other day's channels. Yeah, your mom would sit there reading the parade in the morning or something or the Reader's Digest. Like, all these things were a big deal. Now, no one gives a diddly squat about it anymore. You, uh, Magazines. You, I was going to say, you, you took the words right out of my mouth. Are oh, you meatloaf? Danny, you, you're a, a big music guy, as is Cavino. Two magazines, Rolling Stone and Sports Illustrated. If you were, if you were having a moment, if you were the big woman or guy of that moment, cover Sports Illustrated or the cover of Rolling Stone meant everything. It did. Everything. Nothing yeah. anymore. And, uh, I mean, we worked for Maxim all those years, and nobody cares about that Man, stuff Men's anymore. Magazine? We, uh, started so- our, we started our radio show as Maxim Radio with Cavino and Rich. I got stupid ones that no one's going to okay, say we'll, again. We'll, we'll, go, we'll go hit for hit here. Go Let's ahead. go hit for hit. Our last caller said American Gladiators. That's a funny one. Uh, but it made me think of something I had written down already. It meant everything to kids back in the day and nothing at all anymore. Saturday morning cartoons. Saturday morning cartoons yeah. was everything. And, of course, we were kids, but kids don't care because they have cartoons at their disposal anytime. You know, they got, what's that stupid one on Netflix? Coco Melon. Well, yeah. They got cartoons anytime. They got the Cartoon Network. Disney we Plus. We had a wait. Disney, you have a whole channel, right? You have Disney Plus apps. YouTube. We had a, we had a zoom down the steps <laughs> to the smell of pancakes on a Saturday morning just to catch some Looney Tunes, <laughs> yeah, to you want- catch some Pee Wee's Playhouse. Smurfs. To catch the Smurfs and Muppet Babies. That Muppet meant everything. Baby. And if you missed them, you're like, ah. So that that is a big one. Things we used to care about. Programming. Programming in general. That is a yeah. great answer. You listen, even our show. If you miss our show, Danny G puts the podcast up every day. There's no excuse. You don't need to. I, I was trying to explain to my kids the other day, Danny, you, the way you were trying to explain the TV guide. I was trying to explain to my kids that you couldn't pause TV when I was a kid. I felt that was that's our old guy thing. I'm like, kids, you used to have to time running to the bathroom, getting some cookies, and then getting back to the living room before the commercials were over. 
That was an art. There was an art there. That was an art. Reminds me of a story Clay Travis told me. He took his kids uh, and his family to a hotel on vacation. It was the first time they had ever seen commercials. <laughs> And they were crying. They were throwing a fit because, like, what happened to our show? Yeah, kids today are allergic to peanuts and commercials. I don't know if you knew <laughs> yeah. that. No, uh, think about lines. that. There's some kids right now that don't even know what TV commercials no, I are. Know. Rich said his kids cry when they – he said the same thing, actually. Yeah. It's, now, my again, kids like, is, it's commercial! The opposite of the NFL draft. The NFL draft went from nothing to something. We're talking about it went from something to nothing. Um, something that was really big, and now we don't care about it at all. Let me hit you with one. I'll I'll, I'll join him. So I'll, I'll put all three of these together because it's all in the TV realm. But the news, Sports Center, and late night TV. I would say late night TV more than anything. Comedians, if you were on Johnny Carson, and then even later Letterman or Leno, that was your break. Now comedians, eh, just do a good podcast or get a Netflix special or something like that. You know, get have a couple viral videos like Matt Reif on TikTok and. You, you get your break. Back then, like, this is even before my time, but I just remember knowing that if Johnny Carson invited the comic over to his couch, that meant, yo, your star was on the rise. So late night TV, when I was in high school I was a big fan college, of Carcinio. Do you remember dude, Carcinio? Who does it? Great bit. <laughs> Carcinio. But even Arsenio Hall. But I was a Letterman guy. I like Conan O'Brien for a while in college, but yeah. late night TV. And then there was that TV strike for, what, eight, nine months? It was all reruns on late night TV. Nobody said anything. Dude, I didn't even know it was that way, right? It's like, I, no, no offense, because I'm sure they're great dudes. Kimmel, Fallon, Corden's done now. But the whole idea of late night. I remember if you would have asked me 20 years ago, Rich, other than doing radio or broadcasting, like what would be a cool dream gig? I always thought hosting a late night TV show was like the pinnacle. Like, yo, Letterman or Leno. I'm going to be like Craig Kilborn one day. Have a late night. Kilborn was the man, and yeah, then, was. then with John Stewart, and you know, they, there's still a there's still something there, but I think it's more Craig Ferguson. I think it's now more in the form of like a John Oliver on HBO once a week, or a uh, Bill Maher who you know once a week, but that whole daily like tonight guest Ariana Grande. Like, do you care? I don't think Not anyone does. Oh, right? I don't give a diddly squat. Yeah. I used to love that stuff. I would stay up and watch Conan O'Brien every night. Conan oh. O'Brien. I couldn't care less. I'll hit you with a good one. And I love Conan. I'm just saying I couldn't care less about any of that stuff anymore. I'll, because it lives on social media and you're not just tuning in. You don't care. You just want to go to bed. Let me hit you with a good one. <laughs> I used to love that thing. I used to love the Max Weinberg 7. No one stays up late to watch late night shows anymore. I got a stupid one. Because this might be me personally. Well, let's hear when it. I was a kid of the 80s, right? It was a lot of cereal. I was a cereal killer back in the 80s. And I'm not saying cereal went away. But I also e used to eat a lot of like Hungry Man TV dinners. <laughs> like TV dinners. Swanson's. Yeah. Salisbury steak. Yeah. Oh, with the little dessert. The little there. apple crumb and, treat. And, and, and I feel like that was such Brownie. a big part of my life. And I know things evolve and things change. But I don't. And I know they still exist. But they are not as popular as they were growing they up. They just have better frozen yeah, food. Like tra examples. they got Trader Joe's like, full like, on little meals. Like you guys, are, you guys remember Kid Cuisine oh, back when we were growing kid up? Kid Cuisine. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> now, <laughs> now these are it's things just different. Trash. Now you get that in that metal tin that it would come well, in. These are things again. Just if you're joining us now. These are things that used to matter that no one gives a crap at, about anymore. A la Steven, uh, I bought you a TV dinner. You know what my parents used to get with Thanks, the TV Mom. dinner? Because my dad would love them. Uh, Stover used to have the, the frozen chicken pot pies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Those were a big deal. But again, now, like you said, Trader Joe's, I go there, I get like the orange chicken and bags of rice. Like you can make like a meal at home yeah. now. It's a different it's world. It's different, that's all. Did you guys have the fold up TV trays so you could sit oh, in the living room yeah, with your. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> sit there and watch the Little House on the Prairie, bro. Because Michael Landon was on the cover of the TV guy. Yeah. You make a lot of uh, Little House on the Prairie references. You must have been a huge fan. Huge, <laughs> huge. Uh, um, what you got? I okay. was Sam. So a couple things here: the whole industry of flying in an airplane. Okay, you look at like uh, the great movie uh, Catch Me If You Can. He's walking through the airport. Everyone's, you know, they're like, oh, the pilot, the pilot of the airplane of this airplane is so important. And people used to wear suits on planes. People used to get like little packets of cigarettes. Now people are flying in sweatpants and there's unruly passengers. Dude, that's and rich. People are crammed into the plane. Pilot's and the pilot, drinking. 
pilot song over. <laughs> but listen, the pilot is still so important. Can I tell you? There they have your life. Iowa on Sam, the line. Can I tell you something that I do? And I'm going to pass this. Casualized. I'm going to pass this along to everyone else. Yeah, you know what? What Iowa Sam is being presentable used to mean something. Right. Well, people used to wear like suits just every well, day. That's, that's like, just look wrong. at old footage of baseball games. Everyone's wearing a uh, a, a trench coat and a, and a fedora. Yeah. And now we're wearing yeah. sweatpants. We're and, here to see the babe. See? Well, yeah. I, don't, I don't think kids should be going to school in uh, pajama pants like they do, and people are sloppy. But Please, no air, pajama pants airlines, outside of a house. Airlines are a pretty good place to wear sweatpants, so what are you going to do? Are you going to wear jeans or dress pants it on a six-hour flight? a big deal to fly. I got the number one answer. I, on the however, you know, I would say I'm not. Let me, back, let me back you up on something, though. This is something I do, and I want everyone to do the same. When I'm leaving the plane from row one, kidding, I'd never fly first class. One day. Someday. I have. I have. When I'm, Our next Fox contract. When I am getting off the plane, no joke. I always do a little quick as I'm about to make that left into the little uh, accordion hallway. I always see if the pilot's right there and I go, thank you very much. Oh, I always thank the crew. I thank the they pilot. Because they so many jackwads. Dude, they got you through the air from city oh, to city. And, and they're working weird hours and t- 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 uh, time zones changing. I, dude, I always. I thank th- everybody. I say thank you. Dude, if you thank your Uber driver, you better damn well thank the pilot that just flew you 3,000 miles in a metal tube. Uh, manners used know. to mean something, too. Yeah, manners. They don't mean as much nowadays. I'm glad you're keeping them alive. Richard. All right, let me, let me hit one. Let me I hit know, one. I got you. You just said one. Oh, okay, okay. We're going. I got one. At, it's the number. I, no one can beat my answer. No. It's better than space travel. I got right, This better I, be good. No, I, I'm going to beat you already. How about batting over 300? <laughs> It doesn't matter anymore yeah, right. at all. At all. I don't know. The, Dude, the I, I, I saw that. Feast or famine hitters now? Batting over 300 is a sign of consistency. Iowa Sam, I saw a meme about Joey Gallo. I'm like, he's still playing? I went to I went to see his stats. He's batting like 91. I was like, how is he in the league? <laughs> Kyle Schwarber had 40 home runs last year and was batting, I think, 198. Yeah, guys, there's not a batting over 300 is hard. You don't see it as much. But it's as tough. a kid. If you batted over the 300, fences. you were the man. That's true. I think we should hold that back up. This I, day, I agree with you, man. I it bothers you. I think I told you last year, I'm pretty sure I have this in memory, not, I think nine players batted over 300 that's last year joke, out of all man. of Major League Baseball. They should be celebrated. Well, let me tell you, if you think that's in the morning, it's on By the board. By the way, Joey Gallo's batting 122. Good for him. Wow. And he's in the league. Doesn't make you wonder what you could bat. And I'm not hating. <laughs> I'm just stating that. You know, I root for the guy. Right. I'll, I'll give you one. We'll, we'll end with this. And if you have any other feedback, feel free to hit us up at Covino on Rich. Based on yesterday, there was supposed to be an astronaut launch, and I didn't hear one person talk about it. I mean, meanwhile, our parents and grandparents, generations cared about space, the space race, astronauts, NASA. No one cares anymore. The number one answer, because it ties into sports, which makes it even better here on Fox Sports Radio, the idea of getting an autograph. Good one. The selfie has replaced the autograph. Danny G, if you met Brock Bowers tomorrow, your new Vegas Raider. You, you're going to have him sign a napkin? You want him to sign a napkin? A or you want a picture of you and him? Be like, yo, let me post it on IG. What are you doing? I would actually doing? give him a business card and say you're coming on CNR show. <laughs> you're a regular guest. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, so there you go. But that's a great one to end on. If you want to add yeah, to the list. Yeah, there used to be uh, the little autograph books that kids would even carry around Disneyland. I know. And, and, and the stadiums to get autographs in. You see kids running around with autograph books anymore? So you got Bo Jackson's autograph right next to Goofy. (laughs) So if you want to... 